In this video, we're going to take a look at Pandas AI, which is a new Python library that extends Pandas with some of the capabilities of large language models such as ChatGPT. I've got the GitHub repository open, and as you can see in the top right at the description here, it makes data frames conversational. You can ask them questions, and you're going to get answers based on the data and based on a request that's sent to the OpenAI ChatGPT model. And this can cut down a lot on the amount of coding that you need to do. You can just take your data frame and you can ask it a question essentially and it's going to return some sort of answer and that's a text-based answer that's coming back from ChatGPT. So if we scroll down we're going to see some of the details of this library. As you can see it's designed to be used in conjunction with Pandas, it's not a replacement for it. And if we scroll down further we get an installation section, you can install Pandas AI using pip and we're going to focus on this usage section at the beginning of the video. So what we're going to do, if we look at the code here, you can see that we're importing Pandas AI as an object from this library and we're creating a pandas data frame and this is just a normal data frame that you would use in pandas it contains columns and it contains rows of data underneath that what we're doing is we're instantiating a large language model an llm so we import this open ai object and instantiate it and store it in this variable and then we pass that to this pandas ai object coming from the library and that gives us back an object here that we can then call a run function on and we can pass any pandas data frame to the run function along with a prompt and this prompt is similar to what you might enter on the chat gpt web interface for example from this data set the prompt is asking which are the five happiest countries from that data and you can see below that it returns a series of countries from top to bottom of the happiest countries in that data so you can ask pandas ai to perform these queries and they can be more complex queries such as what is the sum of the GDPs of the two unhappiest countries? And that will give you back a number, which is just the summation of those two values. So the Pandas AI object is smart enough when you call this run function to actually be able to interpret the data and give you back a textual or numerical response. And we can also ask Pandas AI to draw graphs as well. In this one, we've asked it to draw a histogram of countries showing for each one the GDP and to use different colors for each bar in the histogram. So we can get some output that's quite common complex including visualizations from this pandas ai library we're going to see how we can do this with a different data set in this video and what i'm going to use is this titanic data set here and i'm going to leave a link to this below the video and you can grab this data set if you want to follow along with this tutorial i'll leave a link to this page if you want the raw data you can click this raw button here and then you can copy the code here or copy the text into a local csv file and that's exactly what i've done to prepare this video i've got a local file called titanic csv and it contains the data and this data represents the passengers that were on the titanic ship and it has a bunch of columns which we'll look more closely at very soon so what i'm going to do is go back to this page and i'm going to create a new python notebook here within that directory that contains our csv file and to get started i'm going to install pandas ai and we can do this with this command here pip install pandas ai and don't forget the exclamation mark which will tell the jupyter notebook that we're running this command here we can run that command and install it into the the Jupyter environment. Once that's been successfully installed, I'm going to clear this out and I'm going to import pandas as pd. That's a typical import of pandas. And then I'm going to go back to the documentation and we're going to scroll up here and I'm going to bring in this pandas AI object from this new library here. Let's execute that and if that completes successfully, you know that the installation has been successful. Now to begin with, we're just going to use pandas in a normal way to read in this CSV of data. So let's go back to the notebook here. I'm going to create a variable called data frame and that's going be equal to pandas.readcsv and we can pass the name of that file it's titanic.csv and then we can check the head of that data frame that's the first five rows and you can see we're getting back the data now let's have a quick look at the columns we've got a column here called survived and that's a key column in this data it tells us whether or not the passenger survived the disaster that happened on the titanic and we also have columns for which class they were in on the ship as well as their sex and their age and also the fare of the ticket the actual price that they paid to be on the ship. So we're going to use pandas AI to ask some questions of this data and also to plot some graphs later on in the video. So I'm going to create a new cell below here and what we're going to do in a second is actually create an open AI object from the library. As you can see here we create this open AI object but I'm going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to go to this section here on environment variables. Now in order to use this and call the open AI API we need to actually get an API key from open AI. Now I'm going to go to the OpenAI web page here and you can see we have the ability to sign up on this page and we have
have a page here for API keys and I've already created this key here and I've got that copied to my local directory. You can create a new secret key using this button here if you need to. But once you have that key, you can go back to the Jupyter Notebook and we're going to create this object now by copying the code that's defined here. So I'm going to copy this line of code that creates a large language model object and we're going to replace this with our own API key. So I'm going to paste a key in here and I will remove this key after the video. We also need to import this OpenAI object from Pandas AI. So I'm going to go back to the documentation and let's scroll up again and grab this import here. And we can go back to the notebook and above this line of code, I'm going to paste that in and then we're going to run this code and hopefully that will complete successfully. So we've instantiated an OpenAI object. What we now need to do is create another object and we'll call this Pandas AI. And that's going to be equal to the object that we copied in from the top here, Pandas AI. We're going to instantiate that and pass the large language model to that object. So let's run this code and below that I'm going to create a new cell and we're going to now run some queries against this data frame and that's the data frame of Titanic data that we read in above here. So what I'm going to do is use the pandas AI object and to that we can call a run method and we pass as a first parameter the data frame itself and the second parameter is a keyword argument called prompt and the prompt takes a bit of text like the text you might provide to chat GPT. So what I'm going to ask is which sex was most likely to have survived. Let's now run this query against the data frame and hopefully we're going to get some output below this cell. And you can see the output here below. It's likely that females had a higher chance of survival. So we're going to check if this is an accurate statement in a second, but we can also add more content to this query. For example, we could ask how much more likely were females to survive in this data. Once that's completed running, we're going to see some output below the cell. And you can see it has output some text. It's more likely that females survived with a survival rate of 74.2% compared to males who had a survival rate of 18.9%. So it's actually giving us some numbers back now. So what Pandas AI is doing is taking the data frame of data and it's taking the prompt that we're giving it. And it's then using both of those to call the OpenAI large language model, which is returning a statement that contains some raw numbers. It must somehow be reading the columns from this data frame and sending them to ChatGPT. So let's now run some code below this cell to check whether these numbers are accurate. So I'm going to create a data frame of just the males in the data set. So we're going to take the original data frame and we're going to index in at all rows where the sex is equal to males. And we can do that with that syntax there. That will give us back another data frame. And in the sex column, you can see that every one of these rows has the sex of male. So what we can now do is check how many of these males survived the disaster. So let's index in at that survived column. And because these are 0 and 1 values, we can simply use the sum function to get the number that survived. And then we can divide that by the length of the whole data frame of males. And that will give us a number. You can see it's 0 0.18. And essentially, this is 18.9, which is the number that was given back by Pandas AI when we sent that prompt. So the statement that we got back was accurate for males. Let's now check for females. I'm going to create a new cell here and paste this code in. And we can change the name of the data frame to females. And we're also going to change the boolean expression of course we're looking for female now so if we run this code you can see we get back a number 74.2 percent which is exactly what the prompt gave us back or rather pandas ai gave us back so you can see that this pandas ai library is intelligently computing these numbers and it's also returning back some text from the language model and it provides an easier alternative way of querying your data frames using text prompts and it integrates pandas with the OpenAI chat gpt models so let's ask a few more more questions. Now I'm going to create a bunch of cells here and I'm going to paste in some questions. So for this one, I'm asking the data frame, what can you tell us about the class of the passengers? Is there a correlation between the class and the survival rate? So let's run this code and see what it outputs. And the answer it's giving us here is that based on the data, there is a correlation between class and survival rate. Passengers in first class had a survival rate that was higher of 0.63. In second class, that was down to 0.47. And passengers in third class, they had the lowest survival rate of 0.24. So we're getting this useful output here from just asking a text-based question to this data frame. Let's see a few more examples of that. If I paste in this code here and the prompt in this case is what is the youngest and oldest age in the data? So that's just kind of some summary information. And you can see from the output that the youngest person was 0.42 years old. Very accurate data here apparently. And also the oldest person was 80 years old. And let's ask another age-based question just below that 
where older or younger people more likely to survive. And the output is telling us that it appears that both older and younger people had similar rates of survival, and that rate was around 30% for both age groups. So that's how we can ask some text-based questions and get back some output for the data. What we're now going to do to end the video is look at creating a couple of charts using this tool. So what I'm going to do is paste another prompt in here. Again, we're running this against the data frame, and we're asking it the question to chart the survivor count for each sex. So let's run that and see what it outputs. Once that's finished running, we can scroll down and we see the survivor count by sex. It's given it that title automatically and it's also generated the bars here. It's a bar chart counting the survivors for each sex. And you can see quite clearly here that there were many more females who survived than males in this data set. So that's quite cool as well. We've asked it a question to generate a chart here and it's done it for us. And we can again give it more information such as to use different colored bars for each bar in that chart. And when that finishes running, you can see that it has generated a chart that's slightly different. It's still a bar chart, but you can see that we have two bars for each sex in the data. For females, you can see the number who did not survive and also the number who survived as a different colored chart. And you also get this legend at the top left. And similarly for males, you can see the number that did not survive. And you can quite clearly see that that's much higher for males than females. And you also have the number that survived as well. So this is pretty cool. We're generating charts from this data simply by asking the pandas data frame a question and using ChatGPT and OpenAI in order to generate the answer for us and plot the chart out to the notebook. So I'm going to remove this chart and I'm going to paste in another prompt here. We're going to ask it to create a histogram plot based on the fare values. So that's the fare, the price that each passenger paid to get onto the ship. We're going to see now a histogram of these fares and you can see quite clearly in the output the majority of these fares are on the lower end of the scale around 0 to 100 but we have a massive outlier at the top. Someone paid around 5 500 pounds to get onto the ship. But again, this Pandas AI library is able to take this query and generate a chart based on the data. And again, we can amend the prompt that's sent here to customize the chart that's generated. For example, we can select a histogram that only has five bins of data. If we change the prompt like that, the output is much different. We only have five bins of data in this histogram. And you can see that these are roughly going from zero to 100 and then 100 to 200 and so on. And if we change that to 25, again, it's going to generate a histogram with that number of bins. And that's the output that we get from that query. So that's the power of Pandas AI. We can take a Pandas data frame and we can send a prompt to that data frame, which is then going to call the OpenAI model on the back end. And the result will contain information about the data frame. It can be text-based, it can be numerical. And as you can see here, it can also generate matplotlib charts as well. So this is a pretty cool new library and I think it integrates nicely with OpenAI. That's all for this video. If you've enjoyed it and you'd like more of this type of content, please let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'd greatly appreciate that. And we'll see you in the next video.